Hey Indies, welcome back to my channel, Ashante here. So today I am going to show you guys how I created this luxury tool robe for one of my maternity clients. Now I'm super excited about this look, you guys. It was a beast, I'm not gonna lie, but we definitely got the job done. Now this is something I've been wanting to create for a while and just really needed the perfect moment to create the garment and so here we are. So I am going to go ahead and get into the details. All of the products that I use will be listed down below in the description box. Without further ado, you guys, let's get into the video. Now this roll took me 240 yards, you guys. That was six bolts of tool from the tool shop. And honestly, at first I thought that I had too much tool, but as I continued to make the actual robe, I realized that I probably could have used a little bit more tool if I had enough, but um, I did use the six bolts that I had. And so what I did was I took one of my duster patterns. I did not have a pattern for the actual robe. So what I did was I took one of my duster patterns and just created the shape of the robe that I wanted. Um, it was really simple, you guys. Um, I did not want it to be really long because I knew the longer it was, the more ruffles I would have to put on it. So I tried to make sure that I did it at a reasonable length. That way that um, my client could wear either flats or heels. But also, I could resell it once this was over. Um, because the client did give me permission to do so so I was super excited to do this now excuse pepper this here is my assistant Kiki um, she's super dope amazing she started with me about a month ago and what was <clears throat> even more exciting about this project was that this was her first time doing something of this magnitude so I got a chance to teach her some new techniques and some new skills that of course are going to carry her a long way in her sewing journey so definitely make sure you guys um, pay attention to some of the new skills um, that I was able to teach my assistant um, in this video. Now one of the things that I did notice um, was that the tool was very see-through and i did do two layers so for each um pattern piece you'll see her cut at least two layers of the tool but if you do not want it to be see-through at all you're gonna have to use a good bit of layers or you're gonna have to create a really long extended arm length so that you can gather all of that in um to be able to cover up the bosom area but because it was so see-through that is actually how i end up cascading the ruffles around the neckline so just the fyi that was how i actually end up using the ruffles around the neckline because i didn't want to cut out a lot of layers of tool another advantage that i did like with having so many bolts of tool is that we were able to cut however many later layers we needed excuse me we were able to cut however many layers we needed in that um, one cut. So don't be afraid to open up the multiple tool packs and lay them out, overlap them however you need to to get the cuts, just to make it easier because the tool is very, very tedious to work with. And then this right here is the back piece, you guys. And all you see, um, if you pay attention to the end, I just extended it to give it just a little, a small little tail. Again, remember, the longer you go out with your tail, the more ruffles you will have to use to fill that up. So just be mindful of that. All right, so what I did right here was just get my measurement length for my godet. So because the tool was not as wide as I wanted it to be, I decided to go to add a godet on the side just to get the flare that I needed. 
So that is um, what I'll be doing additionally with this pattern. And then this right here is the ruffle that I used to attach to the end of the arm. And I only did one layer of that. So right here, what we're doing is just clipping the ends of our <clears throat> previous thread and just changing the machine out. Y'all, this is a real simple trick um, that I learned in design school. Um, don't re-thread the whole machine. Just reattach them to the previous color, your new colors to the previous colors that you had, honey, and pull it through and you should be good to go. And then for this particular garment, it was tool, so it was very lightweight. So I just used my serger to actually sew the entire garment except for the ruffles. So to actually put the whole entire rope together i just use the serger and the only thing that you want to just make sure is that you capture all your layers so if you are doing multiple layers for you know thickness maybe you don't want it to see through or whatever you just got to make sure that you capture all the layers and honestly that's what it was with tool it isn't that tool is hard to necessarily work with i think it's just tedious and it takes a lot of patience so just something to think about All right, you guys, so now I just want to give you guys just a quick view of where we are with the garment. And now I'm going to go ahead and prepare my strips for my ruffles. And I cut my strips eight inches for the ruffle on the robe and six inches for the ruffles on the sleeve. And I'm just taking my mechanical scissors. This is electrical electrical scissors you guys they made the job twice as fast because that tool is something serious to cut through if you're just trying to use res regular scissors so i just cut um three strips of eight eight inch across and i was able to get maybe i want to say three out of the bunch three out of the bunch and for the six inch strips i was able to get four and I used the five tool bolts for the eight inch and one tool bolt for the six inch strips. And the six inch, again, they just went on the sleeve, which you'll see later on in the video. Now, when I sewed these up, I did these in layers of four. So you're going to need four layers to get the fullness that I got if you want even more fullness or you want even more just a thickness in the flounce you would want to do more layers um four layers was thick enough for it to push through the gathering foot on the sewing machine without it ripping through the tool so that was also something that I um noticed as well the more layers that I use to gather it the better the tool ruffled And then we're just gently pushing that through the gathering foot. Now this gathering foot, I got this from Fine Fabrics in Norcross, Georgia here in Atlanta. Um, they're about $10. I love this foot, you guys. Every single ruffle that you see on my website, I've used this foot to do it pretty much. So you get a ruffling foot, honey. Those designs will elevate unconsciously. And there's so many different ways that you can ruffle if you guys are paying attention um, on this particular garment i actually ruffled down the center usually when i do my ruffling especially in this um magnitude i'll just ruffle at about a fourth inch seam allowance across the top just one stitch but for this i actually decided to ruffle down the center that way that i could fold them when i sewed them down and it would give me double the amount of ruffle instead of just one row so all right and so this is what a couple of the tool bolts actually look like when we finish ruffling them and we still had probably about two more to do so this is actually day two of us doing the ruffles Now, I find 
that this project worked best for me, breaking it down into two days. Um, it definitely is not a ish like a really extensive project it can be if you have a lot go going going and you don't have a lot of help but if you do have help then you could break this project down into two and so the first day we just did the base of the robe and we started ruffling the the tool and then the second day is when we actually started applying the ruffle to the base so just break it down for yourself that way you can find time to get in other projects all right so now I'm gonna to go to my serger and here I'm just connecting my sleeves and so this is where I use the regular basic sleeve pattern I just cut it off at about uh, three-fourths and then I'm now attaching the ruffle at the end. And so once I attach the sleeve with the serger, I am actually going to attach the ruffles before I attach the sleeve to the base of the roll. And the reason why is because the ruffles, they get really heavy. It's a lot to try to control. And so if you do have pieces that are going to require ruffles and it's not, it doesn't necessarily have to be attached until after the base is done, then do that. And that way you won't feel like you're dealing with such a big garment. And so this actually helped us out a lot doing the sleeves completely separate from the ruffles on the roll. All right, you guys, so now I'm going to start with that first layer of tool. And I'm just taking it about, I started about two inches from the hemline. And I'm just going to go and I'm going to fold that ruffle down in half. Um, so I sold it down the center, but now I'm actually folding it over so that it can appear to be two rolls of ruffles. And then I'm just sewing it right on the, the end, the top, like a top stitch, a top stitch line. And with this, it was really easy to sew, but you just want to make sure that you are taking your time with it. You're pushing, you know, your tool through, you're making sure that it's catching on all sides you didn't leave a part out and that you're sewing very neatly on the end because that end piece they are that top stitch line they're going to see that um so it's very important that you just take your time with it and just make sure you're sewing around as accurately as possible in the circle So now I'm going to go ahead and once I ran out of that first tool um, bolt, I just went ahead and took the next strip and I overlapped it right on and just kept sewing around. And so that's pretty much what I'm doing. Once I, I they meet at the ends, I'll stop it, go about an inch up and start the next line. So this is what it came out to look like. And I did two rolls of the tool. So that turned out to be four, four ruffle rolls. And so now we're going to go ahead and start attaching the eight inch tool strips to the body of the, the robe. And so we're going to start with that very, very bottom hemline and we'll start probably about two and a half inches up from where the hem um, ends that way it'll overlap just a little but not too much and you just want to sandwich your ruffles down and top stitch right at the very 
edge. I thought that this process would be a little bit harder, but it actually was more time consuming than anything. So very excited to have finally done this roll because you guys know it's been trending for a while and I've seen so many designers make this robe and I'm like, oh my God, I gotta do one, I gotta do one. So this couldn't have been the most perfect moment to make this happen. All right, so once we got to the end, we just cut that off and then we're just gonna go ahead and overlap it. And I think we did it about two inches from the original ruffle. So. And again, just sewing very clean right along the edge. And honestly, you guys, once you get that first ruffle down, it'll be really easy to kind of sew the second ruffle or the next ones that you have lined up. But you really just kind of got to get that base to a solid point first. And usually when you put that first strip on there, it kind of creates like a, a solid form for you to be able to sew that second ruffle down pretty easily. All right, so just want to show you guys what it looks like before I attach the arms. This is before we actually put the remaining ruffles on it and the cascading ruffles around the neckline. All right, so once I got that second row around, I just went ahead, went ahead and laid the ruffle around just to show my assistant what direction she would need to put them in. And then once we actually got the ruffles down on the front, we actually had to just go back in and fill in any place there were like a lot of any place there were like a lot of gaps or a lot of holes. And now the more tool you sew, you guys, it gets really, really thick. So just FYI, be patient. It's it's not the end of the world. Some stuff you get, some lines you might have to guesstimate, but I promise it's gonna come out good. Just trust, trust the process.
All right, and so I also just went and purchased some ribbon from Walmart. It was maybe about an inch and a half wide. Um, and this is just what I use to close the garment, you guys. So once we got this up, this is pretty much the completed look. And then I actually wanted to show you guys, we actually ended up shooting a client that day and she was so amazing and so gracious to let us record um, her very, very, very special process. Um, so this is what we did here. And again, um, you guys know I do shoot a lot of my own stuff um, from my collections on down to some personal clients as well especially if they're VIPs and they've been with me for a long time. They know a lot about this journey. Um, I am using my Sony a7 III um, to get her shots for her. And basically I did the robe. I was able to get her shots and she was so gracious to let me keep the robe and actually resell it because I did this amazing photo shoot for her. So I definitely um, made sure that I attached some of those photos at the end you guys this process was so amazing i'm actually glad i was able to capture so much of it for you and i kind of feel like going forward if it's not something quick if i'm able to do this with a client i am going to try to capture this every single time this is what i love the most about it. honestly just being a designer the finished product seeing it come to life just seeing how much happiness and joy it brings my clients not just myself my employees just everybody so um we're just capturing some of her maternity shots and again if you guys are loving this type of content make sure you like comment and subscribe i tried to make sure i came back with a video that was super dope um but also a hot trending item that i know so many of you amazing designers want to make and i'm actually happy to be able to show you guys how to do this if you guys actually do make your own robes, make sure you tag me in them, especially if you use this video to help you, okay? Um, again, if you are loving this content or if you have something special that you would love to see on this channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, give us a thumbs up. If you are not a part of my indie fashion sewing group andy fashion creators by ashante make sure you click that link down below in the description box as well and join my sewing family um it's been so amazing being able to provide this content for you guys um stay happy stay hungry and stay blessed until next time peace